Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the editors of the sources. If I go to File and choose Clear, I'm going to go to this saw wave that comes up automatically in my first source. Click A, and you can see that the wave shape comes up on the right-hand side. But if I hit Edit, now we're going to get into a whole new level of editing. Now, if we had loaded it as a sample, we're going to see it as a sample in a sample editor. This is something that we're probably familiar with. We see zones and groups. Down on the lower left-hand side, a zone is going to equal one sample. A group is going to be a group of zones. So very much like a sampler. But if we click Additive, now what we're looking at is we're going to look at the harmonics that actually make up the sound that we're looking at. And for each harmonic, we can change its volume, its tuning, its panning, and its phase. Then we have Spectral View. Spectral view is basically like looking at a picture of the sound. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my source again by clicking over here on this X. And now I'm going to load in some audio. So let's say I load in a pad. When I load in the pad, I need to make sure that I choose one of these modes down here. We were having it come in as a sampler, but if I choose additive with a form and element, it's going to give us a very different view. So now I'm going to click Edit, and you'll see that the samples have been laid out just like a sampler. This is something we've probably seen before. If I play it, something we've seen before. But if I click Additive, now we're seeing a very different picture. If I hit a key, Everything has bro been broken down so that right now I see the harmonics that are making up the sound. So it's the first through the 15th harmonic. And then below that, as I play the sound, each of these points that you see is a variation in tuning, volume, panning, and phase. So it's pretty crazy. Any complex sound that you hear can be broken down into sine waves. And that's basically what alchemy is doing. It's taking your samples, breaking them down into sine waves, and then allowing you to mess with them. Now if I go into spectral mode, I'm not really seeing much of anything. But what I could do is I could actually import a picture into this frame, or I can draw my own picture. alter the harmonic content of the sound. Now right now I don't think that I have my spectral uh, turned on, but if I did essentially it would travel from left to right and then pass through all these different harmonics. And you think about each of these pixels as being an oscillator, and then as you go um, brighter is going to be uh, loudness and Vertical is pitch, and then left to right is going to be time as the uh, playhead passes through it. So once again, if I go into the sound, hit import audio, and choose something like alchemy samples, and maybe get a vocal, choose speech. Yeah. We've got two sets of CSV files representing the data that's been in inverse LP. And now I'll choose Spectral, and let's look at this. Okay, now we've imported it using Spectral View. So if I go to Spectral, you can see that it's actually come up as a picture. If I hold the key... We've got two sets of CSV files representing the data that's been in inverse LPCs. So, that's so you can hear that line that I drew, right? Pretty cool. And that's basically how Spectral works. So it imports it as a picture, then we can go through and we can actually draw in 
our own oscillators, each pixel being an oscillator, which is pretty neat. If we go to additive view, then this shows us the harmonics that are going to be creating the sound, and we can alter the tuning, volume, and phase, tuning, volume, phase, and pan for each individual uh, like a picture as it goes through time. And then we have main, which is showing it to us kind of like a sampler, which is pretty cool. Now I'll get back out of this. I'm going to choose File, Clear, and I'll start over again. Like, go to go, go to Global, choose Import Audio, grab myself some sort of a vocal. Grab all of these samples, put them in the drop zone. Oh, I'm doing spectral. I want to put it in sampler mode. Oh, these are all individual. <laughs> oh, there we go. I need to go one step in. If you see a little plus to the left of it, you have to get inside there. Um, and I'll choose uh, additive plus, plus spectral, sort of the best of all those worlds. There we go. So I'm going to wait, kind of let it do its thing. And there we go. It's even multi-layered. It's my additive view. Pretty fun. So there you go. That should give you enough to uh, get you started. Uh, we went through the different modulation and everything else, um, brought in a sample. We talked about sources. We looked at the filtering system. Um, we saw that each one of these has, if I go back to global, uh, we have the three filters that are built into the sources, but then we can go through a separate filter, right? And then that filter, actually, we can have mixed between FX and main. So now it's going to main, but we could have it go to A, B, C, or D. So now I want to go down to the effects. Under main, maybe I'll just pop in like a little reverb or something. I have a convolution reverb, but I'm going to try classic reverb. And then if I turn this saw wave on, what I'll do is I'll have that go to FXB by turning this all the way to the right. And under FXB, maybe I'll pop a delay on there. And then on this source, I'm gonna make a nice little sine wave and I'm gonna create an arpeggiator on C. little filter fun. Until our next cartoon, ciao. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music 
Um, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.